So this should be the last session. Ah, brand new book. Yeah. Um, this should be the last session in our Avram and Ramam Drashos. Uh, and as always, we will be using the superior <laughs> version and on the screen will be the inferior version because we don't have the good one on the screen. Let's review what we did. Let's review all the categories. So five, <laughs> five um, categories of drasha. So there's a uh, simple shot where it's the external meaning is the real meaning and it's fairly easy to understand. Then there is um, hidden ideas where the shot has no meaning and the esoteric idea is contained inside. Then there's a uh, difficult shot where it is to be understood on the surface meaning, but the surface concepts are really hard to understand. So that's that. Four is the ones that are said by way of like poetically attaching them to psukim, um, but it's not interpretations of psukim. And five is uh, exaggeration. Hmm. So those were the five drushos. Then we did the uh, well, well, it's the five categories of, uh, of anecdotes, which we didn't get through all of them yet. I think we did four of them. I was trying to remember. I thought I had left. I thought at the end of the year I had left two, but I'm pretty sure we did four of them because we'll, we'll see. I guess. So category one, and I'm just going to use this thing to help me remind myself. Category one is drushos that are teaching a toelis, like a lesson, and that's subdivided into four categories: a lesson in halacha, a lesson in midos, a lesson in deos, and a lesson in. This is a weird thing, <laughs> right? That's yeah, right. It's, it's, it's right. a dover pella, right? Which we said. Somehow it's going to have to filter into the other three categories, mm -hmm. but like as an anecdote, it's its own category because it's noteworthy, you know, you like the anecdote I'm about to tell you after here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you, I think we had said that maybe the reason for that is to like, 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 uh, like, I don't know, show you that other things are possible, like, right. so you're not like so fo like fixated on what's possible. What's right, possible. right. So th that's true. So the, in, in the sense, so in, co but here, here, here's the point, and maybe, maybe, I'm just saying this now, maybe I said this last time and recanted, so you'll tell me, is uh, that is not a different category of content. It's really a different category of like, uh, of, of uh, style or like mm -hmm. rhetorical move in the sense that, that because it sounds so crazy that people will dismiss it, once you know that it's a category, you won't dismiss it and then you'll access the idea, but the ideas will be in those three categories. Mm -hmm. of, uh, of Dinim, Midos, and Deos. So let's say like with Rebbe Meir and, uh, you know, that thing, that was an insight into like psychology or character reading or like, you know, how names influence people. So that's an idea in, I guess you call it Midos, you know, because it's insight into the psyche. But if you had taught it just, if you had taught that same idea just as like a straight up lesson, then people would say like, oh, that's far-fetched. But if you know that this is a, sorry, if you didn't know of the category of far-fetched thing, then uh, you would dismiss it. But since he lays out this category, then you're like, okay, so this is a legit thing that I now have to like think into for these other three types of content. Right. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think those are the only three types of content in Torah. You when can blame they're all dog. When you do that anyway, you would just say, say it's like a muscle or something if you didn't have this category. So like I think you would categorize it into another category, which we'll see. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe that's going to be, or which we did actually. So let's do, let's review the other ones. And maybe this will force us to clarify. So category two of anecdote is um, things that uh, things that uh, happen in a dream, right? But they are spoken about in a manner that is uh, obvious. Uh, like I said, that's, that is as if they happen, okay? And since the Talmud is only gonna be read by rational people, so obviously they're not gonna mistake it for something that took place in reality. All right, category three, were things that were stated in an exaggerated form. Okay, so it's anecdotes, true anecdotes that actually took place in the world, but uh, but they're expressed as exaggerations. And then four, and this is the one I think we, um, I think this is the last one we did. So let's read this one again, uh, category four, because this is a long description. Because I remember the story. Okay, anyway, so it's We're not gonna read the entire thing, just the description. things that happen in reality. But they were spoken about in the form of an allegory or a, a, a riddle. Is this sound familiar? Hold on. Because look at the example he gives is the thing with Shlomo Melk and the two guys who are dying. 
Yeah, we did. Okay, good, good. I, I, I just wasn't sure. Because I think I made a last, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll elaborate in a little bit. So he says, um, Vira the Pshak Sas Maisio Satelo Kaza Dvaran Naim Minahlanu. You'll see in the in the in the surface level of these anecdotes certain things that are beautiful and 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 uh, desirable. Kumothin Yira the Sas Maisio Satelo Kaza Dvaran Aferim Sheminiasim Nikaras Afilu Lepesi Bukatan. You'll see other things that their impossibility is clear even to the uh, simple dinner to the child. Ulifami Mikra Lumi Sheminias Dvaran Elu the Indian Pshuto Shiavu Lahamin Hadrasha Hu Alpi Pshuto Alpi Pshu Hu Nimna Etzlo. Sometimes these drushas will bring people to believe in the literal meaning, even though the literal meaning contains something that's impossible. But to someone who knows the nature of the world and the manner of its existence, and he knows the style of Hazal to speak in, in uh, allegory and riddle, then he will understand the idea of the mashal and the riddle and he'll recognize it. So that's something that it's a, it's a, not, not the most uh, easy to summarize here. Things that happen in reality, but they're spoken about in, 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 uh, in muscle or, or chida form, which is different than being spoken about in an exaggeration form. So this is where I, th uh, is that category clear? I mean, um, what, what, is the, what, the story, what is the story, basic story with the guy? Is that uh, uh, the two guys, I mean? Shlomo. Um, is it Mountain Moses after this? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. So we said that, like, it's true that, or he said it's true that they were going to die anyway, mm. but like he expressed it this way to, like, uh, uh, for some other reason. I forgot what it was. And I remember, because I remember this, the Shine Ariel, the teeth of the lion, that he says the Nevim mix in uh, Mushal and real events. Uh, so, like, certainly Chazal would do that. And then we had this one in Ervin. There was a Tommy of Rabbi Eliezer who passed in, in front of him. And he said to him, Amr la ima shalim de besu. Tommy ani im yoti So he says, I'll be surprised if this guy lives for the rest of the year. Lo yoti shinaso. And he didn't live for the rest of the year. Amr lo vahi naviata. He says, Are you a navi? And he says, I'm, I'm not a navi. I'm not the son of a navi. Right? Now is it ringing a bell? Yeah. I got to blow my nose. I'll be right back. It's going to be a whole endeavor. Close doors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the first category, fourth subcategory of the Dabar Pele, if you read that, you might think it's this category. Mm -hmm. Meaning you might, let's say the Ruby Mayor thing, you might not think he actually did that. Like that he was able to predict what the guy's character was from his name. You might think that that whole part is expressing like a uh, a muscle, you know. So that's why knowing that that kind of exists, you'll, you, you'll be like, oh, so it did actually happen. And now what can we learn from the actual event that happened? So how do you know which one is which? Like that's the whole question of this whole uh, thing is that, that that there's no there's no easy way to tell. But for him laying it out, then you'll uh, you'll yeah, be able to diagnose it. Yeah. Just to get clear for myself, what's the difference between muscle and the good one? They're both of details. Yeah, I know. Story, good. It, I can only say that the. Guzma is not going to be as rich in ideas in the sense that, like, in other words, a muscle will have a nimshal and the ideas in the nimshal. Guzma is just like a style of speaking, you know, where you just like exaggerate it. Like, what was the, the examples like the, you know, him and his wife died, but it's really just stranger. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he, uh, there was Ruby, uh, Ruby Zera, the slaughtering thing, right? He slaughtered him. He was so drunk mm -hmm. he slaughtered him, you know? There's no idea of like, Slaughtering him means he took away his intellect by like, you know, like he, the, his essence was lost, you know, it's, it's no, he just like hurt him really badly, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Um, what's an example of a Navi where they mix up uh, allegory? And um, so the example he gave, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of an example that I'm familiar with like firsthand, not from the book, but, uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, 
let's say for example, Of no, of where the, it's, it's a nevuah that is expressed in literal terms and allegory mixed together. Hmm. Is it like, uh, like, uh, Eliyahu like riding up the Shemayim on the chariot? That could be. Yeah, if you hold that, he didn't actually ride up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to keep an eye out for it. I'm not, I'm not, uh, not holding in, uh, in, in nevuahs. Yeah. Uh, is that theoretically like that kind of thing? Is that impossible? like just categorically impossible for that to happen in Torah itself? Um, for there to be a mix of mushal and uh, yeah. no, it's not categorically impossible. Depending, well, depending on who you ask, right? <laughs> like there are some who hold that the entire Gan Eden story is literal except the Nafash, right? Like that the Nafash is a mushal for the Yitahara or whatever, you know? Uh -huh. um, and what are some other is examples? The, is the Akeda like that? Maybe I don't think the I don't think so. I, I don't, I've never heard anyone say that elements of the Akeda didn't happen. Well, a Malach appears. So yeah, but the Malach, Malach appearing is, is always, uh, according to the Raman, that's always just in Amari Hanavua. And according to the others, it's a literal event. So like, it's not in others, it's not like, like that is its own rule. Like the Raman says straight out, like whenever a Malach appears in any context talking to someone, it means that it's in Amari Hanavua. Like that's its own category. Yeah. I'll have to think about it and see if there's any uh, other examples of come to mind. I think there, I mean, I think there are a ton. It's just that there's a ton in Yeshayahu and Yehezkel, mm -hmm. uh that like, I'm not familiar with, you know, like Yirmiyahu from what I've seen doesn't do it that much. And he's like the only one of those three that I really learned most, you know, not most of, but a lot of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fifth category, now we're on to the fifth category. Oh, and then Yaku asked me a question, which I just want to repeat here. So Yaku was saying in one of these categories, uh, Avram ben Rama mentions that if the say the name of someone specific, like you could have been Gurian was the guy's name, right? I think uh, yeah. uh, that was in the last example. Yeah, um, but I, I don't even remember what it was. You could have been Gurian. So he says that that indicates that that, that was a real event. Is that what he says? Yeah. Because it named him? Yeah. Did he say that or or, um, or did the footnote say that? No, it says that. I think he, I think he says that. Yeah, on pay base. Yeah, in the bold. Yeah, because he, he brings down the story uh, that it's that said the name of the person, and then he says, "You see, if there are that um, some of them are are not true." Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. So Yaakov asked, well, what about in say for EO, the fact that it mentioned specifics, like how many, uh, how much his wealth was, and uh, it mentioned some names, you know, the names of his friends, the names of his, uh, his uh, daughters. So isn't that in indicative that it was a real event? And, um, and what do you call it? So then how could the Shida be maintained that it, the whole thing was an allegory, you know? So what do you say? I think there's a difference between a safe air and um, a mob mar chazal. Okay. That's an approach. <laughs> and you do see, by the way, that like uh, who is named in the in the safe air, let's say in the Torah's chronologies, it'll single out individuals for un unexplained reasons, you know, like like Sarah ben Asher. She's just like mentioned, like as a, you know, or Basasha, I mean, you know, like she's just a daughter mentioned, or like Shol uh, Ben Hakananis, you know, like these, you know, like, or and you'd be like, well, why are they mentioning these weird names, you know? So, um, so it is like a convention to single out particulars for unknown reasons. So, yeah. Well, I just, on that approach, uh, I, I feel like it would be the reverse. Like, it, I, would, I would be more inclined to say his record it should be literal. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I think Isaac's point though is just that like uh that the Raya or the, the, the sign of being literal that Armin Ben Ram was pointing out does not necessarily apply to entire books of uh Sifre Kodesh. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying that the literary convention of Sifre Kodesh might be their own thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, answer I had you're, if you're making like a like a rough analogy to illustrate a point. Yeah. And there's another thing if you're writing an elaborate description of 
how it's playing out and uh, what's happening and you know like you you give more detail the bigger the scope is yeah that's true that's true I feel like it would make more like yeah it would make more though so the answer i gave which i think fits into this is the raw dog when he's explaining in his hug to eo whether it happened or not and he's debating back and forth so the one of the arguments he gives that it is literal is the fact uh, so he gives two arguments that it is literal by the way it's interesting one is that yechesko mentions uh as three exa ex examples of three like famous people uh daniel um noah and eo isn't daniel after yechesko i guess he didn't know what he did <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um i think it was daniel that he mentioned um and yeah. yeah, so he says, um, uh, what do you call it? Well, actually, technically, <laughs> Daniel was alive. Oh, oh yeah? Oh. Because Daniel was one of the kids taken into captivity when Nebuchadnezzar conquered, and Yechezko was at the beginning of, uh, of the Korban. He was a kid at the time? So he was, uh, I mean, he could have been. I don't know exactly when that Nebuah was right. said, but like he was alive when Yechezko was being misnabe. Um, and so it could be that he's mentioning famous individuals. People will know of the individuals, uh, you know, because Daniel became pretty famous pretty fast, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, but that's one example that he mentions that it's a real event because he says that you wouldn't say, you wouldn't put uh, two real individuals alongside with an allegorical individual. Right. And it's weird to say it's some random other person named Eov because like, who, why would he mention him? But then the other example he gives is he says, what Yago said is like, it mentions specific, it mentions how many camels he had, how many sheep he had, you know, um, and those are specifics and that indicates that it's literal. But then he says the the um, uh, arguments that is not literal, his main argument is the dialogue between the friends follows the exact logical order of a uh, rigorous philosophical dialogue. Mm. And he says that that's not like, uh, you know, that, that's not uh, uh, likely, you know, it's, it's possible it's not likely. And he also says, I think he says, or this is another argument that the fact that there's a 10 way mock locus in the Gemara indicates that like maybe it's not literal, you know? Um, but you see from here, he's, Acknowledging the government around this principle, but he's using it as evidence that's weighed, not as an absolute rule. And, and and he does say this a lot. He does this is not the only place where he says it, but he says that the Torah lists particulars in order to bolster a conviction that the thing actually happened. You know, um, that's why he holds that all the genealogies are, are written because uh, the Torah wants you to have a conviction that these things are real. You know, so he's he's weighing it as a piece of evidence, not as an absolute rule. And there can be exceptions. Also, if you look at the things that are named in Eo. It's really weird because, um, first of all, the the specifics given about his property are neat numbers. That then, when at the end of the book, spoiler alert, when God uh, like pays him back, he gets double of everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, you could argue that the numbers were only given in the beginning in order to say that that everything was doubled at the end, you know. And then there's the weird fact that uh, at the end when he gets uh, he gets uh, 10 kids again. It just names his three daughters. Hmm. Uh, um, and they're weird names. One of them is Aunt Jemima. Um, Aunt Jemima? Yeah. Yumima. Yumima. Oh. And yeah, it's oh, a Jemima. Yumima. Oh, Jemima. Yeah, oh. like Aunt Jemima, you know. Uh, the other one is, uh, oh. is Karen, like the legendary Karen, but it's Karen Hapuch. <laughs> That's her name, Karen Hapuch. And then the other one is uh, some other weird name. So the question I always have is like, why? And it just says, and his three daughters' names were these three. Why? Like, why? Why, why did you not name the, all the children in the beginning? And like, why? If you're naming kids, why not name the sons? Because he also had seven sons, you know. So like, little things like that point to me, like, okay, well maybe it is like, uh, like those names are indicative of like Mashalim, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and like you pointed out, also like the Ram says, Ishaya. Um, the Eretz Utz, Eov Shemo, that's the opening line of Eov. And Ramah says, the Eretz Utz is cluing you into the fact that it's a mushal because it's saying Utz is from Eitza, that you should like take Eitza from the story, mm -hmm. you know? So like, uh, I wouldn't have said that because there is a real Eretz Utz, you know? Like, uh, so I, I, like it's, it, it's hard to tell, but either way we see it's not a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Aren't yeah. there like, like kind of like perfect numbers like in the Torah also? Are you pulling the bourbon? <laughs> yeah yes okay, right. yeah right. yeah that yeah <laughs> yeah um but uh yeah that's also true right. yeah. yeah yeah but this is one that like even non non uh Joshua burn people would notice right but i'm saying it still could be literal even if it's perfect number. yeah 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 
Um, okay, so last category is not a category. Category five, Masios Udrashos Murkavus Mikhalakim Shonim is the Cholent. Incident anecdotes and drushos and drushos, there are mixtures of different categories. The ethanin had varim shiesel chalis or at least bone and bow. One of the things you have to, you should notice and uh, and understand uh, is because uh, it has a huge benefit. The ideas hamasios in in knowledge of anecdotes. Who sheteda kiyimsa b'masa erad shnei chalakim nechalki hamasios o yoser. You might find two two elements uh, things from two different categories or more. Part of it is a dream, and part of it is a way police topic, without a doubt. And part of it is an allegory. If you try to interpret it according to one way, it's going to, you're going to get more confused. But obviously, you should take that as a dream, and this part literally, I mean, it's, it's weird. You will not know the truth of the matter. And it's uh, to point this out to you is uh, going to be enough benefit. But you should know ki gamkin hadrushos nimtayim murkavim that drushos are are uh, composites. Rotomar ki yimta drush echad murkav mishnei chalakim yoser. You'll find one drush that is comprised of two parts or more. I actually have an example of this, a uh, famous example. So, you know, everyone has heard the thing about how the fetus learns all Torah and then a moth hits it and it forgets. You know, so if you ever look at it in context. It has a bunch of stuff about the fetus. So the first part says that when the fetus is in the mother's womb, it describes how it is um, uh, situated, like it's in a fetal position and it describes a fetal position. And then it describes how- Is that an accurate uh, description? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's, well, it says folded like a writing tablet. So <laughs> uh, I guess yes. from what I gleaned from the version, it sounds like it, it, it is like that. Um, I, I don't know what the writing tablets look like back then. And then it describes uh, how it gets sustenance. Uh, and then it says basically that when it's born, then the that which is open closes, uh, that'd be the umbilical cord, and that which is closed opens, you know, mm. it has a mouth. So it's giving these like very physical things, you know? And then it says that it sees from here until Spain okay. because of a candle on its head, okay? What? Yeah. Then it says, uh, then it says the thing about the, it learns all of the Torah in the womb and then a moth hits it on the mouth and forgets it when it comes out. And then it says, it's made to take an oath that says uh, that, you know, when you came into the year, you were pure and like you should remain pure and stuff. So it's one midrash, but the first part is clearly just a physiological description of how the fetus is in the womb. The second part, my understanding of the whole light over its head thing is, um, it's talking about the development. So I have a whole theory on the whole midrash, which is it's talking about the components of the soul, of the the sensory, the nutritive, the imagination, and the rational, and uh, and and the seeing from here until Spain. Oh, because sorry, it says, it says it sees from here till the end of the world, and the proof of it is when you have a dream, you could see something in Spain even though you're here. You know, so like it's giving a true fact, but it's expressing it as a muscle. You know, and then like the thing about it may, it's made to take an oath. Like that corresponds to the failed coming order in the, in the Ramah's division of the soul. But like that's a philosophical idea. So it's like, that's what I, I did try to puzzle that out. And I was, I hit this roadblock because it's all one midrash and it made me feel uncomfortable to interpret each part in a different style. And then he gives me this mat here, you know? So it was like, yeah, good. Yeah, I feel like that's the, the main benefit of this category is to say that it doesn't, they're not like uniformly divided into categories yes yeah and that that's a weird categorization right i mean <laughs> like yeah i mean the it's only the rest of the book. <laughs> exactly yeah i mean what the thing that this reminds me of is what the ramam does about the different views of olam haba that people have mm -hmm. or of the ultimate reward where he has like it's all physical reward it's all like supernatural superhero reward it's all to face amazing land it's all political power and then the fifth one is a mix but that makes sense because he's just diagnosing how people think of it, mm -hmm. not actual categories of thought, about, you know? So whatever, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, then he says an example. We were here today, Chagiga 14b. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if this is, I don't think this is the thing we read. Um, so we'll do the system that we did last time. I'm going to read the English here, and then you tell me if there's anything, or I'll read Hebrew and English, and you tell me if there's anything different. Tanur Rabbanan, is this Maeser Brevi uh, Yochanan ben Zakkai? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tanur Rabbanan, Maeser Brevi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Shai Rochel al-Hamor. So Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai was riding on a donkey. 
Vahaya Mahalach Bederach, and he was going on the path. Rabbi Elazar ben Arach, Mechamir Acharav? It says he's going after you. Uh, he's going what? Outside, out, out of Yerushalayim. Out of Yerushalayim, okay, fine. Yours says Mahalach? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mine says Mechamir Acharav. Uh, it's riding a donkey. Yeah, he's donkeying. Yeah, he's yeah, 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 everyone right. donkeys. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's a word, but... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we gotta look it up on... Gotta look it up on Urban Dictionary and then delete this part of the recording because it's somehow <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> it sounds, sounds like right. vulgar, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. It's a thing that I would do, by the way, as a high school teacher, and you really only need to do this when you're teaching boys, you only need to do this when you're teaching girls, but, like, I, I, I make up a lot of terms, you know? Um, like, just for, for use, like, like uh, clarity. I always vet it on Urban Dictionary because you never know if it's like something like really inappropriate that is that all the kids know and then like you know, yeah. All right. Um Amar Lo, he said to him, oh sorry, no, Amar Lo, yeah, he said to him, Rebbe, uh, I guess who's saying to who? Rabbi Elazar is saying to Rabbi Yohan Zakai, Rebbe, Shanali Paragafa, teach me a parak. Oh, this uh, is the one I was telling you about. Oh wow. We did bring this up, but we just yeah. yeah, teach me a parak of Kava. Um Amar Lo. <laughs> this is oh, a, it's a okay, funny so time you... to ask that question. Like you just yeah. dominate <laughs> that. Amarlo, uh, I said, uh, I said, I'm not going to teach them uh, with the Yachid, right? right? Okay. Right. Ella right. Yeah. Unless he's uh, wise and can understand with his mind. Amarlo, Rebbe, Tarshini, Lomar, Lafanacha, Davar, Echad, Shili, Martani. So he says, uh, Rebbe, uh, let me say before you one thing that you taught me. So he's asking him for permission. Right, right. Yeah. Amar lo emor. So he said, "Tell me." Miad yard rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai in the Al Hakamora. So Yochanan ben Zakkai de donkeyed. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, or is it distant donkeyed? <laughs> like disembarked. All right. Um, the Al Hakamora venis atef, and he uh, he uh, no, literally on talus, or he just turbaned. The um, Yishev al haEvan tachas hazayis, and he sat on a stone under an olive tree. Amar lo Rebbe mivnei ma yirav in the al hamor. So Rebbe, why did you descend from the donkey? Amar efshar ata dorish b'masad merkava ushchina imanu malche sharis malavi nosanu vani erkam al hamor. Oh, so it was the opposite, hmm. right? Is it possible that I should that we should expound I should, to expound on masad merkava and the shchina is with us and the malche sharis are accompanying us and I should be sitting on a donkey? Miad pasuk Rebbe Elazar ben Arach b'masad merkava merkava mas. Elizabeth ben Arach was possible from Master Rekava? Yeah. The student. Yeah, the student. Yeah, the student told him, said, let me tell you some of my Master Rekava. Oh, it was Master Rekava? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. Oh, I, I, I missed that part. Yeah. V'darsh v'yard eish min ha-shemayim v'sibava kol ha-ilanam she So a fire descend from heaven and burn all the trees uh, in the field. Pasku kulan v'amrushira. And then all the trees began to sing song. Even though they were burned? Yeah. You know, singing uh, in uh, in their pain. Yeah. Um, okay, fine. How long does this go? Is that? No, it's all about Oh my. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna read it in English. What song did they recite? Praise the Lord from the earth, seas and monsters, all the depths, fruit trees and all cedars. Praise the Lord. An angel responded from the fire, saying, "This is the very design of the divine chariot, as you expounded." Uh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai stood and kissed Rabbi Elazar ben Arach on his head and said, uh, "Blessed be the God, Lord of Israel, who gave our father Abraham a son like you, who knows how to understand, investigate, and expound the design of the divine chariot." There are some who expound the Torah's verses well, but do not fulfill its imperatives well. There are some who fulfill its imperatives but well, but do not expound its verses well. Whereas you expound its verses well and fulfill its imperatives well. Happy are you, our father, Abraham, that Elizabeth and Arach came from your loins. Onward still? That's it. Nope. Okay. All right, good. Uh, okay, so that, I think it's a clear example, yeah. right? Uh, let's see, I mean, what would you say the elements are? Uh, I think the writing on the donkey is obviously a muscle. <laughs> Sorry, Are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the, the, yeah. Obviously, the fire and such is. Yeah, because you, you know you know what people would say about the writing on the donkey was a martial. I mean, I, I bet there are people who say that. Uh, Mashiach, or what? No, no. I mean, I bet there are people who say that. The, yeah, the, the donkey's a martial. I think it's obvious. Oh, one. for like the instincts or whatever. Yeah, for, for, for your on... matter, kamor, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. is it your your uh, homer or your uh, materialistic thing? Yeah. I, I'll bet you someone in there I was says that. that actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is someone in there? You mean in the Masipa? In the Masipa. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you call it? Yeah. So the the the, the dialogue probably happened. 
Yeah. The burning the tree is probably not so much. Right. The expounding on Mazar Rokhava might have happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. The Maybe he brought the tukim. That's like a possibility. Like more so than the tree singing. Uh, yes, more so than the tree singing. <laughs> that's definitely true. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so let's right, see what why, he says. Why is, the, why is it being Dorish Mazar Rokhava um, like even possibly a Marshall? Why don't you just say it's that little? Oh, no, I am saying that's what. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm reading the wrong thing. I, 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 I spoke more than the wrong place. Okay. Oh, whoa. Some of it was when they were awake, Bli Safek. Some of it was in a dream. Wouldn't have gone there. What makes him go there? Um, like, I would have said it's just allegorical, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is this what no five say something? And then in brackets, Okay, I don't know why we say it's not a marshal though. Yeah, well, what's the, is there ever, I know, like, in terms of, like, saying that a malach is, like, you see a malach, that's, like, in a column, but, like, why, uh, is there a benefit, like, what what exactly is, like, the benefit of saying that something's a column as opposed to a metaphor? I don't know, I mean, I still don't quite get the column thing, like, like, obviously, if you're a nubby and have a column, that's significant, and if you're a psychoanalyst and you have a column, that's also significant, <laughs> but, like, you know, what, what, why do we care, uh, why does this nine write down their columnos? Mm -hmm. And like, why, uh, why do we care about it? What do we get from it? I don't know. I have an idea. Oh, well, I'm just saying, unless he, is, I mean, he's not saying this, so I, I, I'm willing to say this, but like, so I won't. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because I mean, there are a lot of Rishonim who do hold you can get like quasi like uh, prophetic content through a Cholom. Mm -hmm. So if, if he held by that, then it would make sense that Cholomos is a category of anecdote. Because uh -huh. then the Cholomos of uh, Chachamim are, uh, are facing the Marshall. Yeah, and then the other the other possibility, which is uh, which I don't know if, if he holds this, um, that you know you can have um, uh, halomos that have chachma in them. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever had like so the vast majority of these are you have a dream uh, where you say a svara and it it sounds very convincing in the dream, and then you wake up and like that it's just idiotic, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> um, have you had that? Like it's so like that is what usually happens. But I've definitely had things where in the dream, then I get something that like is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And like, um, and then there's like the famous case of the guy with the, there's a chemist and the, hold on, I might have this. Sounds like the intro to a joke. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Mr. chemist and a construction Bye. worker. And a, yeah. Um, um, there was a guy who, who arranged the periodic table. Oh yeah? Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the German oh, wow. scientist, the German scientist Friedrich August von Kikuli, Kikuli, I don't know what that is, was struggling to understand the chemical structure of ben benzene. The answer came to him in a dream, and here's an excerpt um, from uh, his account. I turned my chair to the fire, having worked on the problem for some time and dozed. Again, the atoms were gambling before my eyes. Uh, gambling, like jumping around, not like gambling. <laughs> <laughs> um, this time, the smaller groups kept modestly to the background. My mental eye, rendered more acute by repeated vision of this kind, could not distinguish their larger structures uh, of manifold conformation. Long rows, sometimes closely fitted together, all twining, twisting, and snake-like motion. But look, what was that? One of the snakes had seized hold of its own tail, and the form whirled mockingly before my eyes. As if by a flash of lightning, I awoke, and then that gave me insight into how this benzene was uh, structured. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and then uh, and then I recorded. This is from an article I wrote in uh, 2008, and uh, and I wrote my, my I had I had insight into Tehillim uh, from the dream. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's its own thing. Oh yeah, okay, what was the what was the I just gotta read this. What was the insight? Uh, yeah, I mean it was it was a. Uh, <laughs> I gotta read it just for kicks here. Okay, right. So I, I said uh, I uh, this is me writing. Uh, I had a similar dream last night, only this one was more explicit. My dream, I was on a date with a girl I didn't know. She was stunningly beautiful, though she had long, straight, dark red hair and a pale complexion, features which I don't find particularly attractive in waking life. I have a feeling she was based on the girl with the plums from the movie Perfume, story of a serial killer, um, a murderer, I mean. 
we were in some sort of restaurant eating lunch, but we were sitting at a table in the base midrash where I've learned with my charizas every day for the past five years. We had a pleasant conversation, but I somehow sensed that she wasn't interested. As we finished and I was about to leave, she said, wait a minute. I thought she was going to tell me that she wasn't interested, but instead she said, I have an idea about Tehillim I wanted to run by you. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. She said the following in these words. Okay, so this is the words from the actual dream. Um, most people imagine that reality is filled with some sort of mystical ether and that the recitation of Tehillim has a direct impact on that ether, which changes reality. Personally, I don't think that makes much sense. Instead, I was thinking that the recitation of Tehillim alters the conceptual framework through which we perceive reality. And this, and I emphasize in this article, again, her words. So let me just say that the recitation of Tehillim alters the conceptual framework through which we perceive reality. And that is what changes our lives. What do you think? I got very excited and smiled when she said this, and so did she. And then I added, I think it's a great idea, but there's one small qualification I would make. <laughs> Tehillim alters our conceptual framework of ideas about God and the way he relates to us, which changes the way we experience life and affects how the, how the Hajjgafa relates to us. And then I woke up. Oh. Um, so that, I mean, that's like an extreme example. And you, you don't realize that so many of these things though, like I have these dreams and it doesn't make any sense the next day, <laughs> you know? But like that one actually like works out. That like uh, I was thinking like like okay that that actually the ether analogy is like a weird thing and like you know so if this is true um, and I've got I've got troves of these I mean if if if, if you uh, you know if you, like Isaac can testify that I write about my dreams a lot on, on Facebook and share the uh, uh, share, share the results and, and they're they're often uh, wacky but like sometimes they have ideas but if that's a category of dreams where it's not Nabua, it's not Ruhul Kodesh but it's your mind working unconsciously to put stuff together that you were, that occupied your mind during waking life, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so. Uh, I have another example. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I interrupted Isaiah a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Isaiah. What were you saying? Do you remember? Um, I, th I think I discarded my idea. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Isaiah, what was your other example? Um, Mendel, of the, the, the guy who, um, who arranged the periodic table. Oh. This was, it was something he was like, trying and trying to do and he was not successful then he had a dream suddenly he like like went to sleep he had a dream and he like he saw the periodic table and it was like either like exactly precise or like yeah. maybe like one or two elements off uh -huh. um and like the and, and like he just like had it like pretty much perfect yeah. um because i think i think when you're thinking a lot about something yeah then your dreams will like you know reflect that and like maybe arrange arrange concepts in different ways and sometimes the, the arrangements makes no, make sometimes the arrangements make no sense yeah but sometimes they they have like insights yeah 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 and i, I don't think that's too far-fetched like your mind is you think about you dream about what you were thinking about the day before and like intuition works in ways that are often blocked by conscious thinking so you, you don't even need to have like Freudian stuff for this. It's just like the mind is, uh, you know, like you you are free associating in a certain sense when you're when you're asleep, you know. Okay. Maybe all dreams have meaning. We just don't know how to interpret them sometimes. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's the that's yeah. the premise of Freud, at least, you know. And uh, yeah. Um, okay. The Dimion Hamase Hamurka Megillachim. We're going to go ramp it up a bit. An example of something that has uh, three uh, uh, components. Or categories who might say uh zeh hamase shehu is karna oh same same gemara um vze sham rufazal kishinemro divine within rabbi yoshua haya hu rabbi yossi hakohen mahalkin baderak so uh when these matters were said before rabbi yoshua was this bakule oh sorry oh so it doesn't even state the whole thing okay fine i'll just read it here and when these matters were said before rabbi yoshua he was walking along the way with rabbi yossi the priest Cohen. They said, we too shall expound the designers of divine chariot. Rabbi Yeshua, this is like a trend that spread through the Talmud. Um, Rabbi Yeshua began expounding, and that day of, that was the day of the summer solstice when there are no clouds in the sky, yet the heavens became filled with clouds, and there was the appearance of a kind of rainbow in the cloud, and ministering angels gathered and said to, and came to listen, like people gathering and coming to, to see the rejoicing of a bridegroom and the bride. Until when? Hayahu Rabbi Yossi Hakon Mahakim Amru Ak Anu Nidrash. Oh no, so he does quote the whole thing. So why, what was the bracket saying? All right, whatever. Um how far does this go? Uh Lakasan Kala. Okay. Rabbi Yossi the priest went and recited these matters before Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai, who said to him, Happy are all of you, and happy are all the mothers who gave birth to you. Happy are my eyes that I saw this, students such as these. As for you and I, I saw in my dream we were seated at Mount Sinai, 
and uh, oh, he says in my dream. So that's a good example, right? Um, and we received him at Sinai and a divine voice came to us from heaven, ascend here, ascend here for large halls and pleasant couches are made up for you. Uh, for you, you, your students and the students of your students are invited to the third group who will merit the divine Shekinah. Is that the end? Yeah, the Kaddish Lishis. Okay. All right, fine, whatever. Another example. What's in the Chelak Arvi? That's the, uh, the things that are Mashal, what? Like the couches and whatnot, the passage. Yeah, but he, didn't he say that was part of his dream? He is a Mashal. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he says. Dimion Hachelak Arish and Lemase, who goof a Mase in his car, for each other. Shall you be boring? Elam is asking the Drosh Mase Makava. So the fact that they were learning Mase Makava, that's in the first Kelak, that was literal. But Dimion Hachelak Ashani, Mavur, Bamash Amar, Rabbi Yochan, Menzaka, Raisi, Bechalami. Okay, second category is I saw in my dream. But Dimion Hachelak Arvi, who Mash Amar, in Kibbutz Malachim, Vamidas and Lapanov, the gathering of the angels before him. Oh, because that was clearly before his dream. Yeah. The EF Shalavar appears in Yenze Kihu Gili Sod. Oh, he's not going to tell us what it means because it's a so Obviously, it's a sod if it's about much more color. Okay. Now we get to the Sium. Yes. The uh, the Arvin Nefrasu, the Bardai that we did. Yeah. Is that. Um, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, is that all Mushal? Well, like it sounds like. It no, no, it's not Mushal, right? Because it well, it was an event that happened. Yeah. They all learned Mushal uh, Merkava uh, or Pardes, right? And then. What happened to them is expressed as mushal. Uh-huh. Re- at least when we uprooted the shoots, you know, uh, Ruby Kiva said, when you get to the pillars made of marble, don't say water, water, right? Uh-huh. That's, right. yeah, that's like, uh, that sounds like a mushal as well, you right. know? I wouldn't say that there's a dream in there though, or exaggeration. Yeah. Right. You know, except the exaggeration, ah. So then, died. yeah, they died. Mm. You know, so this is the thing that, uh, you know, the Arvinicus of the Pardes? The fourth time, Ben Aze, Ben Zoma, Elisa Ben Abuya, and Rabbi Kiva entered into Pardes, which is the study of Masim Rukhava and Masim Uh Ben Azai died. 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 Ben Zoma. No. Sorry. Ben Zoma died. Okay. Ben Zoma. No, yeah, no, yeah. Ben, right. ben Zoma looked. Oh, it says it. I'm like, yeah, open here. Right I think Ben Zoma died. Ben Zoma. Ben Azai. Oh, Ben Azai died. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so Ben Azai looked and died. Ben Zoma looked and was harmed, went crazy. Uh, I'm clear how to read it. Elish Ben Abuya uprooted the shoots, like he tore up the uh, plants. Or he even went in in peace and went out in peace. And so we saw the Rosh Bot says, what does it mean he looked and died? It meant that he started his investigation and then hit a roadblock and lived out the rest of his life and didn't continue developing and died. You know, so it's, it's, it's not a, I mean, it's a figure of speech, really. It's not like, I mean, I guess in a sense, it's an exaggeration. It's like, like he basically like didn't live after that because mm-hmm. he wasn't developing a thought form, you know? So it's, it's like an exaggeration. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So literal exaggeration and uh, Derek Marshall. Cool. Just a side point. Yeah. What's so bad about uprooting the shoots? Because then the garden can't grow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like the young trees. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was that? It's, it's much more clear, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Later that day, they saw Joe emptying <laughs> out a bunch of shoots from his garbage in his room. <laughs> okay, um, see him. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was okay. <laughs> All right, um, see him is Kowarti uh, Barna Gadolos. We've already said great things. <laughs> okay, pat yourself on the back there. I don't know. Um, no, I think he means like uh, important things. That's weird. We've entered in without permission. What? Yeah. <laughs> I guess because he's giving you the keys to unlock uh, Agarita, you know? Um, like for every, like he's giving the keys to everyone, mm-hmm. you know, even people who are not ready. Um, and you can see how this could be dangerous. I mean, people could just take literal stuff as, uh, as martial, whatever, you know? And we've explained everything uh, that's sufficient for Navan and Nafakam. Was that a little like subconscious plug for his book, Hamas People of the Hashem? Sipuk, you know. Right. Uh, so he says, I say that my division of Hamasios, Madrashas, Chalkehim, that the division of the anecdotes and the drushes into their categories, and bringing examples of each and every one, 
ki pirashi idea ze kol hadrashos va masim shnim tsu betama ki bekoach karov lemish mevin that division will allow you to explain sorry will is he saying that through that division wait ki pirashi idea ze kol hadras through this division i have explained all the drashos okay ki adati ki lo yikshe afrezos al mevin after this it's not going to be difficult to the person who understands so in other words, what he's saying here is an interesting thing is that he's saying that this wasn't just dividing it for like taxonomy purposes. This was dividing it because through the knowledge of the division that will let you like go in and, and interpret these correctly. Now, obviously it doesn't mean you're going to understand everything. Like, I don't think it's that simple, but you'll have the, the, the keys that you need to interpret it. Um, and from here, because of this, I uh, have uh, escaped myself. I've removed myself from um, expressing appropriate words on those who spoke uh, on Kazal. As have the Karaites and the fools and others. I guess the Karaites probably did not have kind words to say about Agatha, right? If they didn't like even Torch Ball Pat. Um, I, I didn't know what this meant. So you don't drown in the Greek of foolishness. <laughs> Does Yavan mean something besides Greek? Oh, oh. Yavan mean like a march or a bug. Ooh, wow. Nice, okay. Um, I bet that was said in a lot of shuls during the Hellenistic period for <laughs> Krushos. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so you don't drown in the marsh of, of folly. That's a good, uh, that's a good one. Um, in uh, gotta save that for a skating book review. <laughs> um, uh, in matters that are impossible, and you'll find something that is non-existent, or or uh, something that never happened, right? So in other words, you'll you'll avoid believing in things that aren't true, uh, that, that didn't exist. You'll you'll also uh, escape. From denying Hashem, Bahag Shimo also by uh, uh, ascribing physical qualities to him, the Kayotze Bazer. Someday I'd like to read all these footnotes, it looks like good stuff. And that's that's what would happen to you if you explain it according to the literal meaning. And you believe it that way. What? That's a cutesy uh, rhyme. Uh, a student airs his Rebbe hangs. It's, it's hung on the Rebbe. It's hung on the Rebbe. Yeah, that makes more sense than what I said. <laughs> or, or I can say that what I said. I think his Rebbe should hang if he's a student makes a mistake. Yeah. I mean, because he's saying this in terms of he is Yamal Nafsho, or, or he, he uh, uh, was it Yamal Nafsho? No, never mind. He's helping you escape. Right? Forget it. You should understand this fundamental. This is a great pillar and a strong wall, fortified wall. Um, I've explained it with help to me. Uh, he has placed this like a seal on your heart. This should be an introduction uh, and uh, and a preface to everything that you read. Otishma that you hear the addresses from the uh, the addresses and the uh, anecdotes. And it will to Ellis and they'll benefit you greatly. Uh, and you'll be one of the people who understands the truth and recognizes it. And not those who reverse the truth and follow after nothingness and become nothing. That's a phrase from Yumiyahu. Uh, God, may he be exalted in his mercy. May he uh, straighten our paths, and firm our steps, to tread on the paths of truth, and to follow its ways. Amen. May his name be blessed forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. And we and we still should read the footnotes at some point. Uh, not necessarily as a group, but like seems like the footnotes are really good. Okay, good. Awesome. We're armed with the tools, the keys to the palace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Permission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah, can't uh, can't make copies of it. All righty.
All right, so stop here for now, and then I'll tell you my uh, tailing moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so the what? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have it read it yet. And it's long, right? I don't know. There's still more mysteries. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a separate book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Don't know. Yeah. A Gaon. It's not one of the Gaon and Gaon. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so I'm going to stop recording here. Okay, so...